Thanks for joining us on our Friday edition of Mod TV. And the reason we've asked you to join us today is because you've been involved with Youth Parliament and we want to know a bit more. So maybe Dante, we'll start with you. Could you tell us a little bit about Youth Parliament? Who is it for and what is it exactly? Um, so the programs for South Australians um, aged between 15 and 25. And effectively what you do in the program is you nominate um, areas that you're interested in and are then placed into a committee um, that kind of focuses on that area. And then within the committee, um, I think this year there's about 10 people in each one, something like that. Um, you develop a youth bill um, and write it as though it would be written to be submitted to real parliament. Um, and through that bill, which can be on almost anything that's at least somewhat related to your committee's area, um, you yeah, so you, you write write the bill in your committee and then for a week uh, later in the year, normally in July, but this year in, in the end of September, um, we all get together and debate as though we're in real parliament um, and as though it is the real parliament and yeah, debate through each committee's bills. And um, outside of that, it's yeah, a really great experience and meet a lot of like-minded people, I think. Hopefully your uh, debates go smoother than real parliament. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes for good TV. So. Yeah, they seem to be a bit more mature, I think. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, so I just want to talk about what inspired you to join Youth Parliament. Uh, maybe Georgia, if we can start with you. Yeah, sure. Um, so I had a couple of people from my school actually join back in, I think it was 2015. Um, so I decided when I was 15, I was going to apply for Youth Parliament and I did and I got in and I've just loved it ever since. Debating is one of my favourite things to do. So I just love debating on things that I'm passionate about. Have you been involved with um, debating prior to getting involved with Youth Parliament? Um, no, never. My school oh. didn't have a debate team. So, yeah. Oh, well, good time to start. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Dante? What inspired you? Um, well, I suppose, so last year was my first year and what inspired me to apply, um, I suppose it just seemed really exciting, um, really fun, um, the opportunity to you know, kind of learn more about politics and parliament, which I was already really passionate about. Um, and yeah, so I know, just that opportunity um, really excited me and decided to apply and it was brilliant. So I applied again for this year. That's so good. That's so good. Um, so I don't really know a lot about, about youth parliament at all. So um, Dante, what, what have you been doing as part of your involvement? Um, so, so far this year, we've um, worked through quite a lot of training things online. So kind of learning about what parliament is and um, how it works and why it's important and how bills are structured and things like that. Um, and we've also met quite a few times with our committees, um, mostly over Zoom this year, um, to kind of talk about what issues within our area we're passionate about. Um, and then through that, what uh, specific bill we'd like to write. So for example, for my committee, um, which is the Planning, Transport and Infrastructure Committee, we, a uh, person in my group was is really passionate about roads um, in rural areas um, and lost a friend on a dangerous road. Um, and so that was I know, the most convincing proposal, I suppose. And so we then moved, then I suppose, I suppose within the committee decided that was what we wanted to focus on and then had a, have had a fair few meetings developing what the actual policy is and then how that's written into a bill. Mm. Yeah, brilliant. And has there been anything particularly uh, I want to say kind of surprising or particularly interesting about when you've learned these processes of parliament, um, maybe Georgia, like across to you for this one. Yeah. Um, for me, what was really interesting when I started was learning about how bills were actually passed through parliament house. So I thought that it just happened. Like there was only one place that they debated, but it's got to go through both lower house and upper house before it becomes a legislation which was very interesting for me. Yeah. And 
Dante, earlier on when you introduced us to Youth Parliament, you spoke about um, one of the things you do throughout the year is you come up with a bill and you introduce it and then you go on to debate that bill. So now we'd like to kind of move into a conversation about the particular youth bills that the both of you have been working on and kind of finding out what inspired you, um, what these bills entail and kind of what you hope um, will happen with them. So we'll stay with you for the moment, Georgia. Um, what is the bill that you've been working on and where did it come, how did it come about? Um, so I'm in the Community and Humanity Services team and our bill is working on giving children in foster care basically a bit more support and um, really like especially focusing on Aboriginal communities, um, keeping children in care in those communities. Um, so ours came from um, one of the people on my team is a foster in the foster system. So she really decided, like told us about some things that we could change and we just realised, yeah, maybe we could work on that and just bring a bill up and, yeah. Amazing. It's, yeah, it's, it's great to hear that it's coming from a personal space, not just a kind of, oh, that would be great, wouldn't it? But there's a personal attachment within your team. And what about you, Dante? You alluded before um, to, to your bill, um, but would you like to tell us anything more about where it, how it came about? Yeah. Um, so as I kind of briefly covered before, I suppose, uh, we, um, it was yeah, particularly important to one of the members of the team. Um, and basically the idea um, behind it is that the reason, or one of the main reasons that so many roads outside of metropolitan Adelaide are so bad is because the decisions about how we um, how we decide which bits to fix and and where to fund things um, th those decisions happen in Adelaide um, and so the majority the main function of the bill is basically to decentralize the decision making um, and to push that responsibility to local councils who are closer to the issue and we think better equipped to actually talk to locals and take feed, like take on feedback and and the advice of local people that actually drive on these roads all the time. Um, and so fairly simply, it gives councils the power to nominate the pro the road projects that happen in their area um, and then is overseen by a state body that we would set up um, that doesn't necessarily make the decisions, but just kind of oversees the funding and and the program. Um, and so that's the main function. And then and then I suppose secondary to that is a kind of fund more funding for like driver education uh, programs and reforms. So whereabouts in this process of sort of coming up with the bill, introducing it, and then uh, taking it forward, are you at the moment? I'll stay with you, Dante. Yeah. Um, we're quite far through. Um, so our, our like topic and thing we were focusing on was developed quite early and decided quite early. Um, and then from there, we developed a few kind of, well, quite wide, rough ideas. Um, and now we're kind of at a point where we know what the exactly, we know almost exactly what the bill's going to do and more or less how that's going to be conveyed in the bill um, and we're kind of working through specific words and um, how exactly it's structured at the moment so quite far through but not quite finished. Great and Georgia um, coming back to your bill um, you spoke about the significance of it to a member of your team um, is there anything you've been able to kind of reflect on in terms of the importance that you hold for this bill to you personally or the things you've learned about this particular area this bill addresses? I mean, for me, um, growing up in a small community, I did, like, see a few people come in and out through foster care and it just really, the way we're working on it is to just keep children not going through families as much and, you know, like... I never went through family, so I couldn't say how it is, but I know people who have, and it's really hard on their mental health. 
And um, for me, mental health is a big thing that I like to focus on. So it's really helping their mental health as well by keeping them in sort of a more stable environment. And that's I think that's especially true with um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children. Um, I have a cousin who works in um, uh, foster care specifically for Aboriginal people um, because she is a Noongar woman from Western Australia. And just getting the support for them to make sure they're connected with culture is is such a challenge. So it's really great that, you know, at, at least you are focusing on that at that level. So if you do go on, you know, to parliament and make these, to make these changes, you're well versed in it as well. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things that we wanted to do was like keep, children of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island descent in touch with their culture because quite often they can be taken away and not really learning about it which is horrible and yeah 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 and it definitely has multi-generational impact as well so um yeah I just want to, so maybe George we'll start with you what was challenging about putting together a youth bill Oh, um, a lot of, for me, my challenges were finding enough research on what the Department of Child Protection already does because there's not a lot on the internet about that because obviously they're confidential. So, um, and just keeping in touch with everyone was pretty hard, but being a rural participant in the past, I'm kind of used to the Zoom calls. So it it wasn't really too new for me. Yeah, we feel you. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And what about you, Dante? What was challenging about putting together your youth bill? Um, Well, partly, I think, fairly similar to Georgia in that a lot of the problem we're trying to fix is, like, relatively local, smaller roads and even if you do, even if a government does set up a project on those roads, it's probably not a massive amount of money, not going to have a massive amount of publicity. So there's not tons of things to read about what exactly are we doing. Um, So partly that was difficult. Um, But then also, I think, and whether or not it's a challenge or I think it's absolutely a good thing, but I think it is challenging as well, is actually getting, actually being productive when there are so many people that have so many good ideas. Um, And you can sit in a meeting for an hour and a half to decide one pretty small thing and afterwards you think well why have we done like that like was that a good use of time um (laughs) i think at the end of the day it is maybe the time you think you know it's frustrating or or whatever but um yeah i think that's mainly a function of how passionate everyone is um so yeah those those would be the main challenges i think Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what about youth parliament in general? Are there any like specific things that you find challenging being involved in youth parliament? Because it seems very like, especially right now, it would seem very pertinent to to kind of soak up all the information that you can. But I'm just wondering if if you know now, even Georgia compared to where you first started a few years ago, like is there anything right now that you're finding particularly challenging about the whole thing, not just your bills? I guess for me, um, I still struggle with my public speaking. So when it gets to residential week, um, it's going to be a bit challenging again. But I guess like I've come so far from where I was that I can now speak while hiding my nerves, I guess. But other than that, like just learning a few things is still a bit challenging for me, like... Yeah, but it should be all good. At least you're giving it a good crack. You are learning and you're doing great yeah. today. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and what about you, Dante? Do you find anything particularly challenging just being part of youth parliament? Um, I mean, the actual week is pretty tiring. Like you're pretty chock-a-block the whole week, but it's. I wouldn't really say it's challenging. Like... Um, any like it's certainly you know you have to think really hard and try really hard but I like it's great um wouldn't really change anything about it I don't think mm. <laughs> good um, what, what's been the most interesting part of of youth parliament and creating a youth bill 
Um, well, in, in relation to youth parliament as a whole, I think the most interesting part is the, like the very last or second last part of the week um, is an opportunity for like everyone to do a short speech on like any topic. Um, so I think last year the speeches ranged from someone did one about water rights in the Murray um, to someone did one about like their little sister. Um, and I think that's like, that's the most interesting single part. Um, you just hear such a wide range of things that people feel they're important to them and what they think about them. Um, and then in relation to the bills, I think kind of learning the process and, and um, kind of thinking in depth about how exactly you would construct basically a list of instructions is what a, a bill really is to have the intended outcome. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I think those would be the most interesting things. Yeah, and Georgia, is there any particular thing that is most interesting for you or that you particularly love about it that keeps you coming back? I guess for me, it's just the thrill. Um, I love, I mean, as much as it scares me to public speak, I love it. Like, it gives me that adrenaline rush and I just always come back for more of it. Like Dante said, I really enjoy um, the end of the week where we get to listen to people's speeches about something that's important to them. And yeah, I there are some very tough speeches to listen to, but they're amazing at the same time. So it, it's that that hit of endorphins that keeps you coming back yeah. year in year out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just adrenaline, adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you spoke a bit uh, earlier, Georgia, about how you've developed your skills, particularly around public speaking. But are there any other skills that you've found you've really developed um, over the course of creating a youth bill? Um, because I'm like my fourth year, I've developed a lot of leadership. So. This year, I found I was helping a lot of the first year participants with parts and bills to write because, yeah, it's just, yeah, my leadership has definitely been built through writing and just being in the program. So, mm. yeah, that's great. I imagine, yeah, yeah. for what you're a veteran now, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for you, Dante, have there been any particular skills that you've noticed from your own point of view that you've really, um, really developed in the, the two years you've been involved? Um, I think the ability to kind of take in information and very quickly um, decide what you think of that. Um, and in the debates, it's a bit, it's even more specific because it's what you think of it from the point of view that you have to debate um, because of the way they set it up. So there is debate, one side has to oppose and one side has to um, approve just for the debate. Um, so I think that skill, and I think that's like a really useful skill in life in general to know, you know, to quickly be able to work out, uh, this is the, uh, the information put, what do I think of it? What do I, what am I going to say about it? Um, so I think that ability and yeah, in general, um, just kind of developing on leadership and teamwork, um, abilities as well. So all really important and helpful soft skills I think yeah absolutely and this next question it's okay if maybe like you're not totally sure yet but I'm interested in knowing um do you hope to take what you've done in youth parliament into your uh career in the future whether that is related to parliament or politics or whether it's just taking the skill sets you've got and applying that to a different field um we'll stay with you for the moment Dante um well I think absolutely I'll take the skills um I think it'd be silly not to really. They're, yeah. they're um, really helpful in, I think, any employment. Um, I potentially down the track one day would want to work in politics, um, but we'll see. I think the people that go in when they're in their 20s, I, I know Christopher Pine's been out and about a bit recently saying, you know, I, the only thing I regret is going in so early. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, and... So yeah, potentially down the track, but absolutely the skills are really useful. Mm. Yes, yeah. we need people who are passionate though. You know what I mean? Like we need people, we need youth representation for sure, because I think the youth voice is so, so underrepresented. So 
yeah, yeah I mean I mean I probably wouldn't use Christopher Pine as my prime example but <laughs> no, <not necessarily. laughs> yeah but I get what you're saying but yeah I, I would be more than happy to see a lot of a lot more younger faces and for you Georgia how does this relate to where um you want to go in the future um I don't really know where I want to go in the future so so I'm currently studying foundation studies, really doing all the subjects I can. Um, I mean, I do hope to maybe go into politics one day, like Dante said, but not not too sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, and it's it's so it's so okay to not know exactly where you want to go. I've I finished a degree, and I'm like, some days I still wake up, and I'm like uh do I want to do that thing or do I want to go in this direction so uh -huh. yeah so I'm glad that you said that because that is a very valid answer it's all right I've changed <laughs> careers like three times in the last 20 years so yeah I don't that might be indicative of me though so. <laughs> <laughs> um so you know being that you do get all these you know fantastic skills is there something that you would specifically say to people who might be thinking about getting involved in youth parliament maybe we'll go with you georgia first just do it you know like just jump in it's regardless of what you get out out of it you're going to get something whether that's leadership whether it's becoming more confident with your public speaking whether it's I don't know, just learning about politics really, just honestly go for it. I had no idea what I was getting into in my first year. I think I was the youngest participant there as well, just freshly 15 and I'm um, sitting there and everyone seems to be older, but I definitely recommend just if you're of age, just apply when applications open again. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's good. And I guess, do you have that sense of community as well? So, you know, young people with the same interests? Yeah, I mean, I've met some of my bestest friends through Youth Parliament. Um, I still talk to people that I met in my first year. So four years down the track and we're still friends, still catch up. So it's awesome. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, what about um, you, Dante? What do you? What would you say to someone who comes up to you and goes like, "Should I get involved in youth parliament?" I think, yeah, I think absolutely. Um, if you're even half considering it, you should. Um, I think particularly if you're not that keen on politics, um, because I think you learn so much that you're not going to learn at school, um, and that, and I think I think you also learn a lot and develop yourself a lot just by talking to other people. Um, I certainly went in last year with not 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 like a conscious view, but I, I realised afterwards I did have a view that everyone's politics were probably, though everyone my age probably had pretty similar, you know, centre-left politics to me, um, which of course isn't the case. Um, but I, I suppose it is a great opportunity to learn a lot and kind of push your push the like circle of people that you know and the circle of lived experiences that you have been in contact with um just a lot wider so yeah I think it's great learning experience and it's really good fun so I think yeah definitely get involved even if you're not not heaps keen on politics itself amazing some pretty glowing reviews from both of you <laughs> I'm sure anyone watching who has considered it will now continue to consider that. And before we let you go, um, if people are interested in getting involved or at least finding out some more information, where would you recommend they go for this information? Dante? Um, yeah, so the website, um, which is, should come up if you search um, YMCA Youth Parliament, um, that is a really good resource. And also the Facebook page, uh, YMCA SA Youth Parliament is a really good resource as well. Um, has all the information on there. And they are doing lots of posts at the moment as well because it's kind of ramping up. Right, perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Georgia and Dante for joining us on our Friday edition of Mod TV right in time before the weekend. We've really enjoyed speaking to you both about your experience with Youth Parliament today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Thanks. <laughs>
Bye. Bye. We'll see you later.